It's time for Handy Tech again, where companies send us stuff or I buy it and then I tell you what I think is good. With the purchase of a qualifying Intel processor, SSD, or NUC, you could instantly win an Intel gaming jersey and be entered in the draw for the ultimate system. Click now to learn more. So let's get this kicked off with something I've been meaning to buy forever. Looking back at older videos, you can see me taking the temperature of a notebook with a K-type probe taped down to some thermal goop to ensure I'm getting a reasonably accurate reading. This method worked, but is more time consuming and certainly messier than I'd like. Welcome to the new age. I don't know that this particular model is super amazing or anything, but it's very well reviewed on Amazon and for a mere $44, I can now take the temperature of pretty much anything I can aim it at. It records temperatures from minus 60 to 500 degrees Celsius, has a laser guide so you know where you're pointing, uses AAA batteries instead of the, for me, less common nine volt batteries, and has a distance to spot ratio of 12 to one, meaning the patch it's measuring is 1 12th the size of the distance you're holding the unit away from a given surface. It's got some limitations though. It won't take air temperature, solids and liquids only. It doesn't have adjustable emissivity, so it can read higher or lower depending on the reflective consistency of the surface, and it doesn't come with any kind of certified calibration or anything like that. But there are tons of things it could be useful for, including anything you don't want to damage or contaminate by touching it, anywhere that's difficult or dangerous to reach, or even taking the temperature of moving objects with the one second delay between the trigger press and readout. What I use it for is quick and dirty temperature readings on products. With notebooks, it allows me to find hotspots very quickly, and for things like graphics cards, it lets us take a look at... <laughs> Sorry, we're back. And for things like graphics cards, it lets us take a look at at least the surface temperature of components that aren't normally read by software. Great for diagnosing problems. Next up, we've got a product that has generated a ton of confusion over the years because apparently lots of people didn't know that you can simply buy a dongle for 12 bucks and connect up to four wireless Xbox 360 controllers to your PC for single or multiplayer use. I always get people being like, what controller is that? Or like, OMG, Linus is gaming on Xbox when a picture or video shows up with a wireless Xbox controller in it. Nope, not the case. You just plug this bad boy in, install the driver from the disc or download one and force the install, then bind it to the controller in the same way that presumably you do it on a console. I've actually never done it on a console, but uh, if you need instructions, you can find them on the official Microsoft product page. Because every game today is basically a console port, I find using an Xbox controller is a super easy way to make sure that all of the buttons are bound correctly out of the box, and I've been doing this for years. It's awesome and well worth the $12, especially if you already have a controller or two lying around. The last product for today is one that I only bought because I felt like I was forced to. LG managed to make one of the finest monitors on the market, the 34UM95 ultra-wide 3440x1440 21x9 aspect ratio monitor that I reviewed here, with one of the worst monitor stands that I've ever seen. It only has two height settings, and even worse, at the highest fixed setting, it's still not high enough for me. So the Satechi F1 smart monitor stand looked like a good bet to get the monitor up a little higher and add front audio extensions and a USB 2 hub to my desk at the same time. From the pictures, it looked to be well-built, attractive in a minimalist sort of way, and practical because it allows you to use the space under it for storage instead of just wasting it. In practice, the platform is solid enough for me, although the 22 pound weight rating doesn't seem deserved given the complaints from 27 inch iMac users. And while it does allow you to store stuff under it, I just don't find it that nice looking. The picture made it look like it would kind of match an aluminum finish on the top, but when it arrived, I found that aside from the attractive aluminum legs, the finish is very cheap and plasticky feeling. It can be assembled two different ways to either elevate your display eight or 10 and a half centimeters by either folding out or not folding out the two plastic tabs. But this mechanism, while once again, solid enough for my use, just didn't inspire that much confidence. My last complaint is that the built-in four port USB hub isn't powered, not even a power jack to give me the option to buy a five volt adapter and use one myself. That would have gone a long way towards making me feel a little better about the purchase. Maybe I'm asking too much of this one though. It was only 35 bucks 
and I'm still planning to use it because at that price, I consider it very fair. Um, if I wasn't going to use it, I wouldn't have featured it in the video, but next time I might use a little bit more of my less than $100 budget for a monitor stand that we're going to showcase on the channel here. Maybe something a little bit nicer. Speaking of showcase, that's the channel, at least here in Canada anyway, where as a kid, I was able to find all the soft core, or sorry, what was I talking about? Oh, right, uh, Hulu Plus. Uh, it offers simple and reliable video streaming service for your PC, smartphone, TV, or tablet. With a wide range of network TV shows, Criterion movies, kids shows, and anime, Hulu Plus has the quantity and variety to suit a wide range of viewing needs. Personally, I'd be pretty stoked that starting September, Hulu Plus will feature the entire archive of previous South Park episodes as well as new ones. Yay. Now, I've had a number of our viewers point out to me that Hulu Plus, like regular Hulu, costs $7.99 a month and still has ads. Yes, we know. The point of the plus part is that you get more archived content and the ability to view it across a wider variety of devices. Maybe that's not compelling enough for you. Or maybe it is. Why not give it a shot? Visit huluplus.com slash Linus and get a two week trial of the service so you can decide for yourself. Time for the full disclosure part of this video, which um, I think you guys need to know since Handy Tech is kind of straight up recommendations rather than reviews. For this episode, it's easy. I bought the thermometer and the monitor stand for work and the generic Xbox dongle to replace my broken official Microsoft one. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, leave a comment with other suggestions for future Handy Tech under 100 episodes. If you like our videos, the links for where to buy these products with our affiliate code are in the video description along with the support us link where you can buy a t-shirt, give us a monthly contribution, or just change your Amazon bookmark in general to one with our affiliate code embedded so whenever you buy stuff, we get a small kickback. That kind of stuff helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.